Today we are going to be going over the end of year report certifications for um, state reporting. Um, these reports are, are your quarterly reports that you've been doing all year, your attendance, truancy, bullying, um, and behavior. So this is just kind of your final certification. Everything gets submitted um, and we utilize this data um, that's reported to uh, the end of the year on all of your um, accountability reporting, ESE, ESSA, um, those reports uh, is where you'll see all of this. So today, um, before we get started, I did want to go through kind of our upcoming reporting. So ESEA demographics report, your reporting period for that was this past Saturday. So um, ensure that all students were enrolled on the Saturday date in order to be uh, accounted for on that report. Uh, that will be due for certification on 615. Um, so coming right up into the school year. Um, then we also have main schools and main school approval. So that application is due uh, middle of the summer. Try to get it in as soon as possible so we can get everything set up in Synergy and Neo for you. And then end of year truancy, bullying, behavior certifications are due at the end of this month. Exiting students from Synergy. Uh, we had a webinar last week about that. Feel free to go back and view that. It was uh, fairly quick, the portion of our webinar that was about student exits. Um, but all students need to be exited from Synergy at the end of the school year. So please make sure that, that happens. And then in July, we have the Special Education Exit Certification Report for students who have exited special education services uh, throughout the year. So um, that report will be due end of July and daily attendance certification report. Um, so that one's due in July as well. That's what we have upcoming. Um, also not on here is next week, we have a webinar for the special education exit certification report. That will be Tuesday, 6-6 um, at 10 a.m. Um, so if you have not seen that communication, um, there will be a newsletter coming out on Thursday that will contain it. And it will also be posted on the newsroom and should already be posted on the newsroom if you need to find it. With that being said, we'll get right into our reports. So all of the um, reports that we have that we'll be talking about today, there are guides and um, tools on our help desk website for reporting and guidance. The only kind of exception to this is bullying, where in NEO, you have your reporting guidelines and your, um, your statutes and things that go along with it. That's right in NEO on the bullying reporting system. So there's not a lot that you'll find for bullying on the Help Desk website, but it is right in NEO if you need to find it. So we'll be talking about two different tiles today. One of them is the data reporting instructions tile, which will have your attendance and behavior reporting instructions. So that's gonna be your NEO side of things. Um, the way I think about the tiles is data reporting instructions is really kind of the NEO side. Um, Synergy is its Synergy stuff. And then state and uh, student enrollment is kind of just your guidelines of how to report certain scenarios with students. Um, so that can be really helpful. And on that student enrollment guides tab, you'll see behavior, attendance and truancy. Um, so you'll have um, when to report a truancy, when to report, how to report be, uh, behavior, and how to report attendance. So those can all be found there. So locating uh, data reporting instructions tab, you have attendance certification report, you have a few different tools to utilize here. Um, there are multiple different attendance tools available within NEO. So we have a, a few different guidelines um, or guide uh, instruction manuals for how to use those different systems. So de uh, details report, student lookup, summary report, and then a scroll down toward the bottom. We haven't moved it up. It may move up uh, today to the 2022-2023 section, the end of year attendance certification instructions. So that would be what we're doing today. And then you also have behavior certification report instructions um, available on this website or on this page as well. We'll take a look at the student enrollment guides as well. Uh, we have attendance reporting, uh, behavior reporting, and truancy reporting all on this in student enrollments guides. Um, at the end of the webinar, once we have this all posted and what, uh, rendered, you will have access to the 
uh, PowerPoint that we're using today, and all of the links are live, so you will be able to click on student enrollment to take you to the student enrollment tab. So that will be um, all in one place for you. Hopefully that will help as well as you kind of go through your reporting at the end of the year. So once again, we'll be talking about bullying, behavior, daily attendance, and truancy. What I've done for this presentation is I've kind of color coded each slide for each section so that you know which one we're working with. Um, if you were to go back and utilize this webinar or this presentation later on as you're doing your reporting. Neo is, or bullying is a NEO only report. There is no data that necessarily goes into um, synergy to report data with an exception of if the student is uh, is a suspended or um, we'll kind of get into that a little bit later too. So bullying reporting is really only a NEO only place unless they're suspended and then it becomes a behavior. So that would be a separate report for that. Behavior bullying and tru um, truancy, behavior attendance and tru truancy, excuse me, are your Synergy and NEO chain, um, ETLs. So all data will be entered into Synergy and then it will upload into NEO to uh, create those reports that you need to be that need to be certified. So we'll get into those. All LEAs are with public publicly funded students are required to report this. This is um, your kind of accountability reports. Um, it's statutorily required for attendance and bullying. Um, so those are kind of what we're looking to see. Here are your due dates. Um, truancy is actually at the end of the month of June, um, but I think we've kind of given a little bit of leeway there, but really try to shoot for that end of June for truancy um, at the end of this coming month. Um, so we'll start with our bullying report. This is our kind of NEO only report. When you, in order to access this report, it is in the bullying reporting system in NEO. So when you, if you need to report bullying incidents or you need to certify bullying reports, you're going to need access to bullying reporting. So if you do not have access to bullying reporting, then, and your superintendent decides that you need to have it, they will need to submit a access request form for you to have access to the bullying reporting systems um, module in NEO. So that will need to happen before you can get in and do any attendant or uh, incident reports or um, certify any reports as well. Only your superintendent will be certifying. So if you're a superintendent joining us today, you'll need to submit um, bullying reporting system if you don't already have it. So this is kind of our flow chart. Really for this section of our webinar, we'll be talking about the top section of the report because that's what pertains to bullying and substanti substantiated incidents of bullying and cyberbullying. Um, so as I said earlier, there are some instances where you would be putting data into Synergy and NEO for bullying. Um, if the incident includes suspension, expulsion or removal of a student to an alternative setting for at least half a school day, we would follow this down to yes. And if it was about bullying, it needs to be reported in Synergy as a behavior and in the bullying system in NEO. If the incident did not involve suspension, expulsion, or removal of the student to an alternative setting for at least half of the school day, but it or and it was a substantiated incident of bullying or cyberbullying, then it needs to only be reported in NEO. If the student was um, found to be bullying or cyberbullying another student that and they were not suspended, it would only go into NEO. If the student was suspended, expelled, or moved to an alternative setting for the day because of that cyberbullying or bullying incident, then it would be reported in NEO as a um, bullying incident and it would be reported as a behavior. So this is going to come up twice that you'll see this um, screen coming up. For bullying, we are going to be going to NEO. So in NEO, you have your bullying reporting system. 
you can click on that bullying reporting system and it will take you right to this uh, lookup screen where you can select your district and your school year. So you would have it pop up in this list. Uh, if you need to create a new incident for a student in one of your schools, then you can click create a new incident. But for the purposes of cert certification at the end of the school year, you would be clicking on the school summary. And once we click on school summary, it takes us to this report here where you can see each of the schools within the district and how many incidents of bullying were reported for each one. So this is just an aggregate count of bullying incidents. Uh, these are not tied to student um, ID numbers. You will not be able to see those. So what you would want to do in order to ensure that this is accurate is request from each school principal or whoever is um, collecting bullying reporting data at each school level, um, the number of incidents that they believe were uh, reported in the system and ensure that it matches before um, submitting the report. So this says reviewed at the bottom here um, and you would just select review and it would come to us. So that is our bullying report and then we'll get into our behavior reports next. Um, so behavior and bullying are only tied once again, if the behavior, if it, the expulsion or suspension was because of a substantiated bullying incident or cyberbullying. For behavior reporting, this report lives in the student data module within NEO. And so we would go NEO, student data, student reports, behavior certification report. Once again, if you don't have access to, to student data in NEO, you will have to have your superintendent submit a data request, or sorry, an access request for you um, so that we can get your account set up to have that access to student data. Once again, here we see our flow chart. Um, if it is a student who, if a student is suspended, expelled, or removed to an alternative setting, then this is where your behavior report would come in. So now we're kind of focusing on this downward, down, downside of this uh, flowchart. So if it involved bullying, you'll need to report both bullying in the bullying reporting system, the incident number, and then you will need to report the suspension um number of days um and what the incident was in synergy so that it can come up to neo you also have um, incidents that involve weapons drugs alcohol or violence um, those would be reported here as well um, in the behavior report so coming into synergy and then they would upload into neo So once we get into NEO, for this behavior report, we would be selecting student reports. In student reports, they're in alphabetical order, so behavior reports would be up toward the top. So behavior certification report and your behavior details report. Certification report is going to give you the opportunity to submit that report to the Department of Education. Once you certify it, that is what we use on all of our um, data reporting. The details report is going to go into you know, which students went into those aggregate counts so that you can see which students need to be modified or um, maybe they need to be taken out, uh, depending on what the situation may be. Um, that would be where you would be able to see students who were reported as behavior, as having a behavior incident throughout the year. This is your certification report and what it would look like. You would have your reporting organization um, <clears throat> and you would be able to select through each one to determine whichever ones you have access to, to determine what your number of incidents were. When you're in here, you have your link to your details report. So if I wanted to know um, which student was associated with the violent incident with physical injury. I could click on the details report and it will take me to the details where uh, and tell me which student was involved with that. Um, if I didn't believe that there was a physical injury and then um, I wanted to evaluate that, that was that would be how we would do that. So clicking on that details report 
is very important. Um, and then you also have here, this one's pretty important, is your review and submit to DOE. So I highly recommend making sure that all the numbers look correct and that you review the details report before you submit it to the Department of Education. Um, go in and look at your students, count your number of incidents, and just make sure that everything looks accurate uh, before submitting. We link over to the details report. We have here um, your just number your students who were involved. So here I can see that Philippe Buttercup or Buttercup Philippa was involved in a violent incident and with physical injury, and that they were um, su suspended for one day for that incident. Um, so we can also see that the other incident that was here was a alcohol related incident out of school suspension for three days for that other student. In this report, you can also search. Um, so if you had a student that you wanted to see if they were on the report, you know there was an incident, just make sure they're there. Um, you can search their ID number, their name, their um, any, any identifying criteria that you wanted to be able to see who, um, if they were involved or included on this report. You can also save and export this report. Um, so download it to Excel. You can kind of sort in different ways using Excel. So that can be really helpful. Um, and so just being having that option, being able to do that can be really um, important. And then you also have your column sorting. So if you didn't want to have to download it to Excel, you can sort by column so that you can see um, you know, your youngest grade level, your highest grade level, but really that's all it's going to give you. It's not going to take out certain groups. Instead, it's just going to uh, sort ascending or descending. So it can, you can have a little bit more um, freedom and options within, uh, with exporting the report than you can with your sorting within the report. Um, I also recommend that you save this report so that you have it in the future. Um, it will live on um, in NEO for a while, but just also keeping a record for yourself um, can be really important. So that is our behavior report. We're halfway there. <laughs> All right, we will get into daily attendance. I haven't seen any questions come in, just so everyone knows there is the Q&A if you do have questions please feel free to post them. I will try to get to them as we go. Um, so um, yeah, just make sure that if you have a question that you know you can ask, you can ask it. Um, so we'll get into daily attendance reporting. And once again, if you do not have access to student reports, you will not have access to view daily attendance reporting. So it is in NEO in student data, student reports, daily attendance certification report. So that access request will need to be sent in if you do not have access and need it. Uh, that needs to be submitted by your superintendent. Only superintendents will be able to certify the report, so they will need to come in and do these reports as well. For this report, there are four different sections on the student reports page, um, and they have different purposes. So you have your student, you have your certification report, that's your aggregate counts of all your schools, all of your schools in your district, um, and it will tell you um, your incompletes and your chronic absenteeism, uh, your modalities, those things. So you'll be able to see those in your certification report. Your details report will let you see individual student attendance by date of attendance, modality, and status. Um, I do not have a visual of that on this presentation today. Um, but it is something that you can see so that you can sort one student and see the number of days of attendance. You also have that option in Synergy on the uh, student screen. You can find a student and you can go to their attendance and see, it will tell you how many days of attendance they have counted, how many rows of attendance are there. Um, and so you would just kind of want to make sure that those days are matching up with what you're seeing in each of these um, reports that you're seeing in NEO as well. Um, so you have a couple different options for viewing individual student attendance by date of attendance and seeing the modality and the status. Um, so 
Synergy and Neo will allow you to see those. Then you have your student lookup. So if you wanted to look up a specific student um, and see what their um, counts are for attendance, then you can see them um, in that report in the student lookup screen. And then you have summary report. That would be your student total attendance data. So those would be, you know, Philippa was here, uh, Buttercup Philippa was here for um, 150 school days. Um, this was the number of like there were 52 absences or um, however that may play out. So we'll get into the certification report and the details report today. Um, this is a little bit different than your quarterly reporting because this is your final certification and you won't be able to certify the report with any incomplete data. So what I mean by incomplete data, let's get into the certification report. So we can see here that we have total days enrolled, total days present, percent absent, um, <clears throat> number excluded, total number of students chronically absent, uh, percent of the student body that's chronically absent, and then you have incomplete records. So what I always recommend as kind of a rule of thumb is that your total days enrolled should be about your number of students times the number of school days that you've had. So if you have 10 students and you have 175 days of school, then you would have then you would be looking for 1750 days of attendance in that total days enrolled. Give or take a few because not um, not all students are going to be there. Like we have transfers in and transfer out. Um, so it may not be precise, but it is something to kind of keep in mind as you're looking at that number that it can be substantially large um, and that you you want to make sure that it is a roughly about what you think it should be uh, with that multiplication to figure out um, you know, are you missing any attendance data? We saw a lot of that last year where districts had, had very few attendance days in and were certifying reports. And so they had a lot of chronic absenteeism, a lot of issues around um, attendance. And so just kind of keep that in mind as you're looking at this report. Um, and then the other thing here um, for your, so your counts incomplete, those are going to be looking at any students who do not have any attendance data in. Um, so a student who has one day of attendance is going to count as having complete attendance. Um, so that just because it said it doesn't have any incomplete data there listed does not mean necessarily mean that it's not catching something that um, might be missing on your end. So make sure you're checking it out make sure that um, all of your students kind of have the right number of attendance days um, so we can see here um, especially with this row of incomplete with two students it's really easy i know a lot of people have way more students than that um, but just kind of keeping it in mind that this is um, how you can utilize this so there are two students here there are 175 days of attendance that kind of tells me that one of the students is missing attendance um, so this would there, there's clearly an incomplete attendance record for the middle school here. Um, so if you wanted to see what that incomplete attendance record was, you can link to your summary report. So if we go into the summary report, we can see that there were two students at the middle school. So this is specifically for the middle school so far that Philippa Buttercup or Buttercup Philippa does not have any attendance in right now. Um, so there, this is an incomplete record. A Y will indicate that yes, it is incomplete. Um, so we can see there is no attendance data in there. We wanna go back and we wanna look into um, Synergy and see if there was any attendance data entered, if there was attendance data entered and it didn't upload to um, NEO, that would be something to reach out to the help desk about. Um, if there, was no attendance data entered into 
um, synergy, but you see it in your local power school, Infinite Campus, Tyler, whatever system you're using locally. Um, and for some reason, it's not pulling from pulling the report to upload into Synergy. It's not being included for some reason. That would be something to reach out to your local SIS vendor about um, and just get some feedback, give some feedback to them and say, hey, it's not uploading, it's not pulling the information for a complete file. It's interfering with our state data. Um, so just kind of keep an eye on that and make sure that all your students are kind of being pulled uh, in Synergy, that all attendance is there, and then make sure it's uploading into NEO accurately. Um, and if you have any questions about that or uh, want to know a little bit more, uh, please feel free to reach out to me anytime. Um, my contact information will be at the end of the slideshow. Um, I'd be happy to do some training around that or help out with anything that you're having issues with. But system issues, upload issues, those types of things go directly to our help desk. So on this report, you can also search for specific students. Um, you can export this report to see, you know, your aggregate counts of students, how many students are um, absent, how many students do you have that have zero days enrolled or zero days of attendance. So you can sort this by your incomplete data and see if there are any issues that you need to resolve. Um, so that can be really helpful to utilize these tools. Once again, don't certify that report until you get into the summary reports and see what's going on with each student and make sure everything looks correct. I also wanted to take a look. Um, oh yeah, and you have column sort sorting on this one as well. So you can sort each column. Um, once again, you have more options. If you export the file to Excel, um, you have more options to kind of sort and move and remove groups and put groups in and, um, so you have more flexibility there. This will only do ascending and descending. Um, but I also wanted to take a look at another example. So this was the same group of data, but this was the um, elementary, or sorry, no, maybe it was the middle school level. Maybe I, maybe I messed that up. But anyway, um, so we can see here that we have um, chronic absenteeism, this student is chronically absent because they have 10% or more of their enrollment, they're absent. Regardless of excused or unexcused absence, if a student is absent for 10% or more of their um, enrollment and they've been enrolled for 10 days at least, um, then they are going to be considered chronically absent. Um, so we can see that there. We also just because a student is chronically absent does not necessarily mean that their attendance is incomplete. Um, so just making sure that you're checking and uh, making sure that their attendance is up to date and accurate for those types of situations. And then with that, we will get into truancy. And for truancy, once again, student data, you will need access to it. If you don't have access to it, you will need to have a NEO access request form submitted to the Department of Education for our data team to give you access. Um, that will need to be submitted by your superintendent. So make sure that you have access to this report. Only your superintendent will be able to certify the report. Um, so just please make sure you have access. And um, so you can also just as a little plug here, I know it's the end of the school year. Some people may be transitioning over to new positions or leaving your district. Um, this can be a good time to kind of evaluate who has access to which reports and uh, which modules within NEO and Synergy. If you have questions about who has access to your data, you can submit an email, submit a ticket to the Madam's Help Desk and we can put together a list of um, people who have access. So that way you can determine if anybody needs to be removed um, or if they need, um, if you're missing people who need access. So just as a little plug there that you have that option as well to make sure that your student data is safe. So once again, we're in NEO, we are in student reports. And if we scroll down, once again, alphabetical order, truancy is toward the bottom. We have truancy certification report and truancy details. So once again, your certification report is gonna be your aggregate counts. And then your details report is going to get into your specific students who are involved in those aggregate counts. So you have, um, you can drill down, see who is involved in what. Your truancy data here, um, 
we can see that there are two truant incidents. There are 17 unexcused absences between the two incidents. The average unexcused absence per truancy incident is 34. Um, and then we have an incomplete truancy. So incomplete truancy, we've actually been talking about this language. We may be changing it. Um, I don't believe anything has come of it yet. But an incomplete truancy means that the attendance data that is being reported for a student would indicate that the student should have a truancy uh, documented in Synergy. So if a student does not have a truancy that started in um, Synergy, what you would want to do is you would want to go through and review their attendance, make sure that they are not missing days of attendance that they actually were present or ex um, were excused. Um, and then if they were in fact truant, you would want to report that um, as a truancy in Synergy. So those are really just your truancies that need to be reviewed based on what we saw in the attendance report. So there were, con there were um, consistent absences for um, X number of days the the, in the attendance report that will pull and say, the student should be truant. That's what you're seeing in your incompletes. Um, so that would just be where you could review them to make sure that there weren't any um, errors in the data. So once you are in here, you have access to view the details. So we'll go into the details report for truancy. In this report, you can see which students were in were truant, um, when their truancy started, and when their truancy ended. Okay, potentially. Okay, thank you, Rick. Um, so I just saw Rick's comment. Potentially truant. It, the language has changed. Um, I knew it had been a conversation. I wasn't sure if it had come to fruition yet. I was very recently um, that we were discussing that. So potentially truant is um, the language for that um, incomplete column. So right here. So potentially truant means that we're pulling it from attendance. It could be a truancy, but we're not sure it needs to be reviewed by the district. Thank you, Rick. So here in your uh, your details report, you have um, your grade level, your number of unexcused absences for each student. You can see the type of truancy, and then you can see when it started and when it ended. A note on end dates for truancy. Uh, as we discussed last week in our webinar, um, exiting a student from Synergy will exit with certain codes will exit students' um, truancy records in certain ways. Um, so a really great tool to determine how your exit is going to, uh, how your enrollment exit is going to interfere with your exit of your truancy would be your student enrollment guide. Once again, that is on the student enrollment um, guides page. There's a page there, uh, student enrollments, um, and it will go through and tell, or actually uh, the Synergy exit guide will tell you which true and oh, which exit codes will exit truancies and how they will exit them. So um, just so if you know that you don't have to go in and exit each truancy before you go in and exit all your students. If you use certain codes, it will exit your truancies automatically. So you don't have to repeat that work. So then on this report, you also have your search. You can find a specific student. Um, you can export this to Excel um, and you can sort by columns to get your information um, that you need. Um, once again, I prefer exporting. That's completely up to you. That is all I have for today. Um, I will kind of open it up for questions. If anybody has questions, please feel free to um, throw them into the q and I'll do my best to answer them if there's something that I can't answer. Um, I will reach out to some people and see if I can get some answers for you. But the best person to, or the best place to uh, reach out for contacting uh, about reporting questions would be the Meadows Help Desk. Um, that would be if a report isn't working, Something's not uploading from Synergy into Neo. Neo is 
not reporting the correct numbers or something looks off, please feel free to reach out to the help desk about those. And then if you have anything um, training wise that you want to review from today, or you are looking ahead to any reporting periods or something like you're just not sure where something is, please feel free to reach out for training. I'm more than willing to do one on one training. Um, we can do group training at your district. If you want to get together with a couple districts in the area, we can get together and do some of that too. Um, so I am more than willing to do any of that work with anyone. Um, please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions after this webinar. I'll kind of hang out for a couple minutes for questions as they come in. Once I start to see some people dropping off, we'll kind of close out today um, and enjoy the last few weeks of school. I'm not seeing any new questions coming in, so I will take this time to say thank you, and I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Um, and once again, if any questions come in, please feel free to send them my way. Um, I hope everyone has a great day once again, and um, I'll see you next week for Special Education Exit.